Okay, I'd like to call the, uh, the meeting to order of the Albany County IDA. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I call the uh, call the roll if that's acceptable to the chair. Yes. Uh, Mr. Clay. Present. Mr. Paparian. Present. Mr. Dreslin. Present. Ms. McTighe. Present. Mr. Rother. Present. Uh, chairman, I'd like to ask the chair to note that uh, Ms. Reese is not going to be here tonight. She has to be uh, uh, excused uh, from tonight's meeting. And so, Mark, so noted. Uh, first order of uh, business on the agenda is a motion to uh, approve minutes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, may I have a motion? I assume that everyone read the uh, minutes of the previous meeting. If so, may I have a motion to approve, please? I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All in okay. favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. Motion. Uh, by Ms. McTighe, second by Mr. Dreslin. All those in favor, aye. Thank you. Uh, second motion to approve the financial reports, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, have everyone uh, read the, uh, the financial reports that yes. was uh, sent to you by email? Yes. If so, if there's no uh, questions, may we have a motion for approval? No, we'll be. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, too, if I can note, the books are now with the auditor. Uh, I sent them all the files and all our papers. So our year end audit's in progress, and hopefully, they should have everything they need. When does that uh, typically uh, wind up? Towards the end of uh, March or towards well, the end? Well, we, yeah, we needed to file by the end of March. So they usually are maybe <coughs> about the first week of March or so of getting everything to us so we can look at it and approve it. Do everything we need to do. I'll follow up with them to get you a draft well in advance yeah. of two days <laughs> before it's due, so everyone could sort of take a, take a look and provide comments. Thank you. Okay. Um, the uh, next item before the uh, board, Mr. Chairman, is resolution to approve the annual housekeeping resolution uh, for the agency. And, uh, yes, the. Uh, uh, chair to note that uh, Ms. Reese, who has served as a secretary to the board, uh, as she will be leaving the board, uh, leaves a vacancy. Uh, uh, Ms. McTighe had uh, expressed a willingness to serve in that position, subject, of course, to uh, approval by the chair and the board. Okay, is there, is there, first of all, let, let me, uh, while we're on that particular resolution, since we were talking about the last meeting, I'd like to thank Mike for. Uh, chair in the last meeting and all of you that were there and I apologize for not being here but um, I was a little bit under the weather <laughs> but thank you thank you for carrying on the business of the agency appreciate it um, so where are we um, well things are the uh, uh, item before the uh, the board is to approve the annual housekeeping resolution for 2020. Okay. Uh, draw the uh, chair and the board's attention to uh, two items uh, of change from prior year, all other things being uh, the same. One is, as I indicated, that uh, Ms. McTighe has uh, offered to serve as secretary with the departure of uh, Ms. Reese from the board. And secondly, that uh, given the fact that there are currently two vacancies on the board, that the uh, current uh, uh, committees would remain in place with those members who uh, are there pending the appointment of new members by the legislature, at which time uh, it's my understanding the chair would intend to reconstitute the committees, bring them to the board with a full, based on a full membership. Uh, okay, any questions in regards to that? Um, we, we uh, perhaps by the next meeting, we will uh, we'll attempt to have uh, two new members. Um, the chair of the legislature and his council uh, uh, spoke to me about it. Um, we're, we're trying to be diligent and careful in terms of who we who we pick for members of the, of the of the board. Uh, so, but by by the next meeting, hopefully we'll have uh, we'll have two members, at least one in place anyway. Okay. Uh, and the next, uh, oh, we need we need a uh, motion on the uh, uh, on the resolution, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion on that resolution. Uh, the the uh, housekeeping. I'll move it. Second, Mr. Barian. 
I'll second that. Mr. Thank Rosen. you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we, uh, as part of that, as part of that, I certainly um, would like to, uh, like to officially appoint uh, uh, Miss. Uh, McIntyre? McTeague. 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 Oh, I'm, I've been pronouncing it. I'm sorry, McTeague. <laughs> it's I'm a sorry, common McTeague. mistake. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, thank you for volunteering to serve as our secretary. And uh, um, we're very appreciative. And uh, is there any questions in regards to that? I have one, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Would it be appropriate to add more to the check signing authority? Uh, that way, because uh, right now, <coughs> it's really yourself and myself would be the only two authorized signers. And, you know, in case, uh, you know, the, we need two to sign on the checks, yes. if somebody isn't, uh, you know, around, uh, I think it's prudent to have, you know, Marlene at it as uh, Teresa is exiting uh, from that. Uh, Council, do we need a resolution to that? The, right? the, the resolution, on, on, it's my understanding under the bylaws that the secretary is an authorized signatory and, uh, so uh, upon the resolution of the board approving Ms. McTighe's appointment as secretary, she would be authorized to. Okay, uh, I'd like to do it kind of official like. Uh, can I have a motion to officially uh, uh, appoint her as the secretary for the board? For the record, all in favor? Uh, Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you very much. Um, I don't think that that was necessary, but I like to put it be entered into the record mm -hmm. that You're the board has approved. Thank you. Okay. Council? Okay. And, and I'm sorry, I missed the motion and the second on that uh, motion, Mr. Chairman. I think Mike made the motion. And I second, second it. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Rutherford, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. Um, next item on the agenda is a resolution to approve uh, the agency joining the uh, uh, Center for Economic Growth. Um, as the uh, the board members are aware and chairs aware, there's been discussion regarding participation in the Center for Economic Growth program for uh, a number of times. They've come before the board and uh, presented in great detail uh, information regarding their operations. Um, uh, Mr. Paparian, uh, who's been a long-term member of this board, is also on their board. Um, and uh, uh, as I say, this is something that the board has discussed. My understanding from the last meeting was that the board wanted to go forward with joining the uh, Center for Economic Growth at the corporate level, require an annual contribution of $10,000 to support their regional activities. Uh, that would also mean that the uh, board would have a, a seat on the uh, board of directors of the Center for Economic Growth. Uh, and this resolution authorizes joining at that level, the chairman to appoint uh, a designated representative uh, to the board of the CEG to represent the uh, Albany County IDA. My understanding is that because you're on the board, uh, Mr. Perry, your intention is to uh, abstain from the vote? That is correct. Okay. So, but that, that being said, we still have sufficient uh, uh, board members, assuming that all board members uh, vote aye. To approve the resolution, Mr. Okay. Um, I, I think it was yes. Oh, I was just going to motion, but to go on. Sorry. Well, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I, I think it, I think it was good that you discussed this at the last meeting, and I think it's good that we joined the organization. I have discussed it with uh, uh, the uh, legislative uh, uh, leadership, and they all agree. Uh, they think it's it's good that we join. Uh, so, may I have a resolution? A motion like Mr. Greslin, a second. Second. Well, I'll, okay. I'll, <laughs> I will second the motion to join, and then I'll abstain from the next decision, I guess. Okay, so uh, Mr. Greslin, Ms. McTighe, uh, seconds. Um, uh, we just to kill the vote on the motion. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. okay. With, okay. with notation that Mr. Preparing abstained uh, from the uh, uh, this disclosed his participation date in the, the organization that I'm saying for both of us. So I believe uh, we need a representative uh, to on, uh, on, uh, on that uh, board. And Mr. Chairman, just uh, 
uh, uh, due to uh, illness as we're in the last meeting, just to uh, let you know, and as part of the discussion at the last meeting, uh, Board Member McTighe indicated that she would be willing to uh, serve as a representative uh, uh, to volunteer for that position. It's not uh, determinative of anything, but I want to share that information with you uh, as part of this discussion. Thank you. I think that's good. I, anybody have any objections to that? I think it's very, we want to keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but thank you very much for serving on, on the board to represent us. Uh, uh, How often do they meet, Michael? Uh, about five times a year. And then there's various um, uh, off committee, you know, meetings, uh, economic development functions that uh, the board members are you know, always invited, not necessarily required. To attack. Okay. So I could say probably a dozen uh, functions, you know, over the course of the year. Do you serve on any committees? I do not. Okay. And we're joining at the uh, ten thousand dollar. Right. Uh, that's the corporate. That's designated as the corporate level. That is the uh, uh, the lowest level of participation. Uh, the, some participation levels go up to a quarter million, half million dollars a year, uh, at which uh, we are entitled to uh, have a representative on the board of directors. I'm not. I'm not sure. I quite understand the structure of, as you move up in terms of dues. And what do you What do you get? I, I really don't understand that part of it. Well, some some uh, individuals uh, or organizations uh, uh, serve on the executive committee of the board, uh, which has a little bit more, uh, um, say, power of direction of where the organization is going. Um, higher up on the uh, membership list, you are. Your advertisements, shall I say, are embedded in the literature of okay. the organization. So, if they're deal specific to attracting, you know, companies that come into the market, you know, uh, I'll give a for instance, National Grid, uh, you know, will have uh, you know marquee, uh, you know, titles, you know, on all the literature to, to try to attract, you know, those companies, you know, coming into the area. Uh, you know, Key Bank is a major sponsor, so Key Bank would have. You know, so mm -hmm. you know, okay. available okay. headspace okay. uh, on all the uh, publications. Uh, so it's more getting your, your name and all out there. But as the organization of the IDA, we would also have the ability, uh, not the ability, but we would have, you know, our name as, as, a, as a sponsor, you know, on their, on their website and, and certain literature as well. Okay. Mike, question? Other, uh, than, uh, other than Rensselaer County, where do we stand as far as the 10,000? In comparison to other municipalities, mm, I would say uh, uh, the other <coughs> municipalities were right there. I mean, Rensselaer County, you know, always uh, not always, but has taken a pretty good leadership role uh, in their contribution levels. But with other IDAs, I would say we're right there within that ten to twenty thousand know, dollar bucket of membership. One difference too is Rensselaer County is top down with their IDA. Yeah. The, you know, the city of Rensselaer had a project going. Rensselaer County came and just grabbed it. Yeah. Whereas this IDA always works with the localities and defers to the the various IDAs. So they they do everything from the county down. Here we do everything collaboratively. So. That's specific in Rensselaer, but right. they're, they're a member of uh, the CEG. Right. And you know they uh, you know their <coughs> membership is. Are is, we going to be the only Albany County or the only? municipality in the county that's on the IDA uh, or on the in, board? In, in, excuse me. Are we the only ones in Albany County that will be in, on the, the only IDA? I yeah. believe uh, the city of Albany may have a uh, have representative a on there. Okay. Um, I don't know about Colony, but I think the city of Albany you know, may have representation there. Good. Good. Okay, any other? I just have a question. Yes. So will Leslie, will you facilitate that membership or do you want me to do that? How would that work? I believe we have documentation yeah. here that... Yeah, to, uh, to fill, yeah, to, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Okay. We, we will we'll initiate, I mean, they've, they've provided us with uh, information in terms of the membership to fill out the form now that the board has authorized our membership okay. uh, and to pay the uh, dues. And um, I'm confident, one, one of the things that, uh, I mean, 
Mr. Perry's had a lot more contact with them over the years, naturally being involved. But my interaction with them is they're very responsive and uh, and the, they're very interested in our participation. Mm -hmm. So I think that once they're notified that we've approved uh, joining the membership, um, you know, they'll work probably through, through Mike to get word to you. I, I don't think you'll find that communication okay. is a problem or orientation as far as how to participate in their, with, their with process. With the chairman's approval, I could reach out to the representative yeah. that we approved it. And then yes. number two, that Marlene, and I'll supply your contact information and have a representative. Perhaps we can make a, a conference call introduction okay. to the organization, and then you know from there. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm more than happy. Thank you. And and the one the one thing too that I'm, I'm certain is uh, implicit in this is we'll look forward to hearing back any suggestions. That I'm certain the board would look forward to any suggestions that you you Mr. Perrin or you Mr. Tyke have for. Mm -hmm. Uh, improving our participation or you know uh, activities we might support okay uh, that that kind of, that's the uh, the uh, formal resolutions uh, before the board this evening mr. chairman um, I have one uh, piece of information that I'd like to update the board on regarding uh, our uh, uh, web presence and developments in that area and then uh, what I'd like to do uh, of course sorry uh, you Mr. Chairman is turn the floor over to our special counsel Joe Scott from the uh, Hodge and Russ um, uh, he's prepared and provided prior to the meeting a, a, a number of uh, pieces of information the board regarding uh, the uh, uh, updates and activities with legislation and regulatory activity okay. um, and regarding the uh, development of the uh, uh, website Albany County is going through a process of changing over the manner in which they operate um, their web system. I believe they're bringing in a new support system or a new contractor to provide their internal service. I don't know or don't purport to know all of the details, but it's a, it, my understanding is it's a major revision in how they operate um, structurally. I've been in contact with uh, the Director of Information Services and his staff actually the start of the switchover process was today uh, yeah. and what I had discussed with him was making sure that the IDA um, is in compliance with the regulatory standards and the statutory standards that we have to meet. Uh, Joe's firm has provided a very detailed sheet it's essentially a checklist of things that uh, are requirements for IDAs. One of the things that historically had, had been uh, the way this had been dealt with in with Albany County was that both the Albany County I IDA and CRC shared a website. In addition, that website was dealt with as an essentially in a department of Albany County, meaning that you had to go to the Albany County website and then drill down to find our website. That's no longer acceptable to standards. So what I've discussed with the director of the information director information services uh, and we'll be meeting later in the month with his uh, his people and the new people coming in is having in this in essence a top-level domain name for us like Albany County NYIDS.com <coughs> it'll still be hosted on would still be hosted on the Albany County servers we'd have all the benefits of their security protocols and and their support services to make sure that things are maintained in compliance with statutory things they have a lot of requirements where they have to keep things posted for a certain amount of times as we do and so we you know would dovetail with that operation but when you search for us you'd find Albany County IDA for you as an end user you would be able to go there without having to go through and navigate through the Albany County site he believes that that is is very you know possible to do we don't have confirmation should that be problematic we'll certainly come back to the board and there are other alternatives in terms of going to standalone operations like I believe um, they have in the town of Bethlehem and, and other other locations but for right now that appears to be very viable the county has never charged the county the the IDA for any services they provided we've always worked collaboratively and cooperatively with them and that appears to be continuing we're, we're certainly grateful and appreciative for that on uh, on their uh, um, you know on their on their part um, so that's um, that's the uh, that's the status on that and as I indicated Joe had provided along with a lot of other very substantive material uh, to the board I've known how much chance everyone's had to go through it but at this point, I'd like to uh, 
to turn the floor over to him, Joe. Um, uh, just if any remarks you'd like to make on uh, uh, the information that you had provided. And before we do that, do we do you want to do that first, or do we want to address there were the issue that came up last time regarding the water bleed project? There was a clear question by the board members. Well, I think I'll uh, take that up under own business. I think I would handle that's that under own business. That, that's fine. And before I start with reviewing the, the memoranda that was uh, distributed previously to the board members in, in preparation for this meeting, uh, Mr. Foreman, did you want to chat about the policy manual and the staff? Oh, thank you. Yes. Stats? Yeah, just uh, and thank you, Joe. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, <coughs> Over the past five years, particularly, and in recent, recent past couple of years, there's been substantial statutory and regulatory activity uh, relating to IDAs. And one of the reasons why, and it's reflected in the website, there, there would be a separation between the IDA page and the CRC page, is because the requirements for the two agencies have begun to diverge significantly. It used to be they had pretty much the same thing. One of the things, tonight we're having our first live streaming meeting, the CRC is not subject to that, that requirement, for instance. There's a lot of other record keeping and informational things that they're not doing to be it's much more appropriate uh, to maintain those separately. Consequently, over time, our, our uh, bylaws and our policies um, uh, you know, have grown increasingly in need of a, of a top to bottom, stem to stern review and revision to bring us into compliance. Mr. Scott's firm, who as we know, uh, represents agencies across the state of New York and has a, a wealth of experience in this, has been working with us to, uh, to engage in that process. They've got a, an initial draft that counsel myself, Joe, representatives from his firm, uh, some of his partners and associates are going through the process of reviewing. And uh, in, the, in the close future, we'll be able to provide to the board a draft of updated policies and procedures for the board to review and consider for adoption so that our, uh, our operations and our policies will be in, uh, in compliance with, with current regulatory and statutory requirements. Thank you, Joe. Is that, I mean, is there anything more you want to add on that? So thank you, Mr. Foreman. So, Mr. Chairman, what I thought I would do is I would just summarize. I, I distributed, I think it was four memoranda, three, three or four memoranda addressing various legal issues um, over the past six, eight months. And I thought I would just summarize those for the benefit of the members. Mr. Foreman and I attempt uh, for each IDA meeting to give a little bit of a uh, a primer, if you will, or an up to, you know, a, a, a report on current events uh, affecting IDAs, and so um, that's the reason for the materials. I have not brought additional copies of those. They were all sent to you electronically. I can certainly furnish them to you in a copy if you, if you want. Um, <clears throat> the, first, the first document was a, a, a short memo, two pages, just describing suggested uh, conduct and operating procedures with respect to um, um, addressing uh, you know, behaviors, if you will, um, with the new live streaming um, uh, requirements imposed on the IDA in terms of how you conduct a meeting, um, addressing uh, parties at the meeting, um, and, and various uh, uh, procedural issues. The second item I think is more is more interesting and uh, I'll go into more detail. The second memo described legislation that was adopted by the New York State Legislature last year affecting uh, industrial development agencies. And the first one is the most obvious one, which is the live streaming legislation, which uh, we're seeing implemented uh, today uh, by, for the Albany County IDA, implemented timely. It's effective January 1. There are some of our IDA clients that have not rolled out a process for live streaming so they have held a meeting in 2020 uh, not in compliance with the law. The law does say to live stream to the extent practicable, but it's, uh, I think it's incumbent upon all of us, uh, the IDAs, to, to, to roll this out and to have it in, uh, implemented. And so, frankly, a credit to the, to the board, to the staff, the council, that we have um, a live streaming uh, taking place tonight. <clears throat> um, just a couple of items that I want to highlight with respect to that, those rules are the live streaming must be meetings um, and hearings. So when we hold a public hearing with respect to a project, um, that public hearing needs to be live streamed 
and that's going to create some pressure on the, on the part of staff to affect the live streaming at the remote locations that are that uh, the public hearings are held because in another provision of the IDA statute our public hearings need to be held in the town or jurisdiction where the public uh, where the project is, is going to be located the last point that I want to uh, highlight uh, with respect to the live streaming legislation is that uh, these recordings must be maintained for a period not uh, not less than five years so there is some uh, uh, cost incurred and costs associated with the maintaining of these records the second piece of legislation <coughs> that I wanted to talk about briefly was um, legislation that authorizes the Authority Budget Office which is one of two major state agencies that oversee uh, IDA activities authorizes the Authority Budget Office to suspend board members and the senior staff person of the IDA uh, in cases where the IDA has failed to timely report uh, or issue their financial reports. Um, <clears throat> the, the bar is, is very low on that. The test is 36 months. Uh, and this IDA has historically filed their reports timely. So I don't see this legislation ever affecting <coughs> this board and, this, and these members. But the reason why I want to spend a couple minutes talking about it is that when you go back and look at the memorandum, take a look at page two of the memorandum, and it's the, the second bullet from the bottom of the memorandum. And there's a, there's a provision in there where the board can, and I'll use this verb uh, with some degree of hesitation, can trump the action uh, <laughs> by the ABO with respect to that suspension and the way that the board can trump that action is by adopting a resolution in an open meeting with that resolution including the facts and determinations as to why the board feels it can over overturn the suspension issued by the authority budget office and the reason why I'm stressing that is that with our municipal, governmental, industrial development agency, public authority clients, when they want to take action, we, and, and we're asked to bring a resolution, we bring a resolution that typically has findings and a determination and a series of determinations in the resolution. And the reason we do that is that we want to create a good basis for the action being taken. So when we adopt a resolution for a particular project, there's typically a whole slew of findings and I'll point them out to you again when we do our next project and then a series of determinations and that all creates a, a, a paper record contemporaneously with the action taken and it's very important from, uh, from, a, from a, a standard of, maintain, of making sure that your action cannot be overturned at a later point by some sort of challenge. So that's what I wanted to highlight in that legislation, not because I think that legislation is ever going to apply to us, because we are timely in the filing of reports, but it's very interesting that buried in the legislation is a cookbook, if you will, on how, what steps you need to take if you're going to take the extraordinary step of overturning a regulatory action. Hey, Joe, what happens... Uh if you do make that step of overturning the budget authority, mm -hmm. uh, can they can they come back at us, or is it a stalemate? I'm sh the the action, and again, this is new legislation, so there isn't there isn't any you know track record on this, Mr. Weaver. But <coughs> what I would what I would imagine would happen is that there'd be litigation commenced at that point. But there's nothing in the legislation that gives the state no. authority the right to come back at us. No. No. So what they would have to do to challenge us is they would have to commence an Article 78 action. And, and the whole basis of that Article 78 action would be whether we comply with the provisions of that provision of the statute, namely whether we had findings and whether we had a determination contained in our resolution. Because what typically happens when a, when a governmental ent entity is challenged 
on taking action is that the judge usually will not substitute his or her judgment for the action of the governmental entity. But what they what they take a look at is were you arbitrary and capricious? That's the standard. Mm -hmm. And by having findings and having a determination laid out in the resolution, that is usually enough to convince the judge that whether they think you were right or wrong, um, they're not going to challenge the action. They're not going to overturn the action because you acted deliberately. You, you looked at the materials. You interviewed a witness. You have a record. You, you uh, uh, referred the matter to counsel. You had staff report on it. So you had a, a track record, which is essentially what we do for our, our, I, our IDA projects. You schedule a public hearing. You review the public hearing record. Staff <coughs> and counsel report on the project. You have an elaborate resolution. All that is building a record for uh, your action. <coughs> the next item that I wanted to highlight was um, a, an amendment to the statute that allowed the Office of State Controller, the second state regulatory agency. Yeah. IDAs are, are notable because you have at least two regulatory agencies that, that follow your every move. <coughs> um, is that it provides the ability of the Office of State Controller to audit entities that you create to undertake projects. Several of our, IDA, of our IDAs own industrial parks, uh, uh, receive federal and state grants with a number of conditions on those grants, and what they do is isolate liability in connection with those, with those uh, undertakings is to create a not-for-profit or to create an LLC to undertake the project on behalf of the IDA, a controlled entity, so that the IDA is not exposed to liability. So for instance, if you, if you looked to develop an industrial park, you may not and probably would not want to own the, actual, own the industrial park because owning real estate potentially exposes you to all sorts of liability. So you create an LLC controlled by the IDA to own the industrial park and undertake the projects. This legislation allows, authorizes specifically the Office of State Controller to audit that LLC in connection with the undertaking of that project. The fourth piece of legislation that I wanted to point out to you is, and if, and if you were reading the memorandum carefully, you'd say, well, why, Joe Scott, did you include this in the package? Because the last bullet in, this, <clears throat> in that description described that the piece of legislation had been vetoed by the governor. So it had been authorized by the legislation, passed by the assembly, passed by the Senate, and then vetoed by the governor. And the reason why I included it in, in the materials is that First of all, the requirement imposed an additional notice of uh, 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 action on the part of IDAs with respect to undertaking a project. Currently, as I've indicated previously, when we consider a project, we need to note, provide notice <coughs> specifically to the affected taxi jurisdictions of the project and the holding and the scheduling of the public hearing with respect to that project. This legislation ought, uh, required the IDA to send a copy of the resolution that we adopted with respect to the project to the affected taxing jurisdictions. So when I read it at first, I said, well, another thing we have to do, another piece of paper we have to mail, another certified mail receipt that we have to keep track of because you want to make sure you have a record of, of that. Well, the governor took the position that this was duplicative, didn't offer any any uh, significant benefits and veto the legislation. So candidly, good for the governor, and uh, <laughs> frankly, uh, one for the good guys here. And I included the veto, uh, the veto message there because I thought it was interesting for you to take a look at. The last item is um, a direction uh, on the part of uh, a direction to IDAs to include a consideration of green energy issues when considering uh, entering into pilot agreements. And so this is uh, something that's consistent with both the legislature's uh, concern about green energy and renewable energy and the governor's concern and priorities with respect to that, uh, that area. And uh, so that's something that we'll be sure, as Mr. Foreman has indicated, that we're, we're working on a redraft of your policy manual and expect to have that ready for you in advance of the next meeting. 
that that, uh, that, that language will be included in, in the policies of the, of the IDA. So that's a, a summary of the legislation that was considered, not considered, but actually adopted by the legislature last, during the last legislative session. The next two items were items that were referred to by Mr. Foreman, and those were um, two pieces of, of uh, two pieces of information stapled together. One is a website checklist, and the second is a background with respect to the source for why those particular provisions need to be on your website. The last memo that I wanted to highlight for you is is. Um, a, a summary discussion and it's fairly long I'm not going to go through it in that level of detail but I'm going to hit the highlights here and that is a summary of provisions that are contained in the governor's executive budget which deals with IDAs and this is a provision or provisions uh, imposing prevailing wage requirements on IDA projects the, the headline is, is that if we consider a project that meets a two-pronged test, that project, when it's undertaken, the construction contracts must comply with the New York State prevailing wage requirements. Two-pronged test is that at least 30, that the, the level of benefits being extended to the project need to exceed 30% of the construction project costs. So what the task will be that when we get an application, assuming this legislation or if this legislation goes through, that, and we do this already, in our application form, the project applicant provides an estimate of the financial benefits being extended as part of the project. Sales tax exemption, mortgage reporting tax exemption, an exemption from real property tax. Those numbers need to be totaled up, multiplied by 30%, and then compared to the total construction project budget. So that's the first prong of the test. The second prong of the test is if the total project cost is in excess of $5 million. So the design there, the theory there is that this is to be applicable only to larger projects. Um, it's in the governor's executive budget. We haven't seen, it's still early in the legislative session, we haven't seen any significant uh, response from the Assembly or the Senate. Last year, and frankly, for a number of years, prevailing wage has been a hot button item uh, with respect to economic development projects. <clears throat> so um, there are a number of exceptions. Exceptions include affordable housing projects. Um, there's another one which, uh, uh, exception for projects involving brownfield development, which seem to me to be extraordinarily broad. Um, not to say that it's not a valid exception, but it seemed to me to be a very broad exception. Another exception was for projects receiving DRI funds, you know, downtown revitalization initiative monies, which again seemed to me to be a very broad exception. So some of these were, I wasn't quite sure where the drafts person was coming from. Um, the last point, and then I'll pass it back to Mr. Foreman, we can move, uh, move back to the meeting, um, <coughs> is that, and candidly I need to include it in the memo, because it's lacking in the memo, is that, um, is that this becomes effective not this year, but next year. And I thought that was interesting too, because uh, what happened last year with respect to the pending legislation dealing with prevailing wages is that there was a, a no small amount of pressure imposed on developers, self-imposed pressure imposed on developers to close transactions before the close of the legislative session because they were worried about prevailing wage rules becoming effective last year. So we had a blip of <coughs> in February and March because there was anxiety on the part of, of project developers that they may be swept in and, and subject to these prevailing wage requirements. The legislation didn't go through 
this year it's coming back, but it's interesting that the legis the effective date is next year, not this year. And um, what I found is that there's always a reason for for a legis or for the, the, the words in these in, in, in draft legislation, and I'm I'm very curious as to uh, where that or the reason for that the delay. So I found that very interesting. And with that, I'll open up for any comments or questions. Joe, has there been any mention of mi minority set-aside contracts as joining up with prevailing wage? Uh, that is a very good question, and I will tell you, Mr. Weaver, that uh, we forgot, um, that there is a provision in the prevailing wage uh, bill uh, dealing with minority and women-owned business enterprises. And it appears to be just um, aspirational, not uh, required, not restricted, right? That's what it appears to be. But the language is very dense, and, um, and I have not had, and other people in my office have not had the time to, 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 to go at that. But I will be able to report on that at the next meeting. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised if prevailing wage grows to include the, both of those items, too. We have seen it, I will tell you, speaking from personal experience, because we deal with, you know, a number of our clients are state agencies, and we are, um, we are seeing that those provisions in our retainer contracts, and it's very difficult for large upstate law firms such as ours to, to get the percentages that, he, that is needed, and, and uh, um, so it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I, I don't, I agree with your sentiment. Okay. I don't, okay. Th thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Scott. Uh -huh. Moving forward, there's no other uh, uh, new business uh, at this time, Mr. Chairman. Um, one item that was uh, discussed <coughs> at the last uh, meeting, the, uh, there was a request that had been presented by a project that the agency had done back in I believe, 2014 or 2015 called the Hudson Shores Apartment. It was part of a larger uh, set of projects, one of which was located in the city of Coes, another of which was located in the city of Albany, which had been uh, uh, undertaken by those municipalities' IDAs. There had been a, apparently a, a change in the ownership, a very minor change in the ownership of the uh, entity. And uh, as, a, as a result of that change, apparently uh, uh, regulatory requirements meant that they had to come back to the original issuing agencies and both notify, disclose that, notify them, and get their consent to it. Uh, it did not necessarily represent a substantive uh, change, but there were questions from the board regarding what did it mean, because on its face it was such a, a minor uh, a change that there was curiosity as to that. M Mr. Scott and I have conferred on this, and he's undertaken and has a report for the board regarding that particular project, and also a suggestion uh, going forward that you know we uh, we think will will improve that process. Uh, Mr. Scott, you yeah. thank you, Mr. Paul. And you'll all recall the, uh, the discussion was fairly uh, robust at the last uh, at the December meeting about, about that matter. Um, um, all three projects have moved forward. Uh, I, I reported at that time there was a project in, in, um, in Cohoes, Albany, and Waterbury. We handled the Waterbury, the Albany County IDA handled the Waterbury project. Um, I did do a follow-up memo as requested by the board members uh, confirming that um, uh, no change in the management, no change in the, the company and, uh, owning the facility. There is, a, as Mr. Foreman indicated, there's a, a very minor change in the ownership of the company that owns the uh, the project. Um, all three projects went forward uh, by year end, and uh, and the project developers did express um, thanks to uh, all three IDAs for acting uh, quickly on the action. Um, I think the, the big takeaway for me um, at that meeting was that um, even on um, what appears to be a minor matter, it's important for the project applicant to make personal appearance before the board on any kind of ask. 
and uh, that will be uh, standard operating procedure with uh, Mr. Foreman and myself with respect to any subsequent actions uh, that come before the board. So you, uh, you won't have to uh, ask questions of Mr. Foreman or Mr. Scott. You'll have the project applicant here, uh, and it's a very easy ask, or it's a very easy thing for me to, to put to the project applicant because um, I'll, I'll simply say, listen, if it's important enough for you that you want us to take action, it should be important for, enough for you to come to the IDA meeting and ask directly. So um, all, it'll only be an unusual situation, and what, um, what we've seen in, with, other, with other IDAs is that they appear by phone, but I, I know that what we will do is um, uh, make sure that the, the, the applicant is here so that you can ask questions directly of the, of the participants. So that's that's my quick takeaway on, or my quick report on on that on that uh, matter. Okay. Is there any, <coughs> anything else? Well, there are no other items that uh, uh, I have to uh, bring forward uh, at this time, Mr. Chairman. No. I, I I think I would be remiss not to mention the fact that we had a little bit of a problem in the legislature on the. Uh, <coughs> the project that we did down with the uh, tires um, what was it the uh, is this recycling uh, project in the yeah. port, port of Queemans yeah. Uh, yeah is that that's what you're referring to right yeah okay. yeah there there was uh, that's I don't know if you recall that's a project that we approved and uh, it was the uh, uh, what was the firm that built it um, I, 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 that escapes me. This was, uh, I know it was in the port. This was about four, four or five years ago. This was the recycling as part of that, the exploration the recycling and development. The, car, uh, the automobile tires? Car, was that Carver Larraway? The car, it's Carver Larraway is, yeah. the, is the owner. He's, he, his firm, uh, uh, Larraway Industries, I believe it is, is the owner of it. I don't recall. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, the, and I, I didn't look up the information. It just occurred to me that, uh, just in case you hear something, it was, uh, it was on the floor of the legislature the last, um, I think, about a month ago. Um, there was complaints uh, by, I believe, Delmar, Bethlehem, uh, Albany, uh, about the uh, the, the uh, burden of the car tires. That uh, and uh, it. it oh. Oh, Mr. Chairman, not to interrupt you, I think what you're referring to has to do with the Lafarge Holson. Lafarge, that's, 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 that's what, what it is. That's what it is. It's not Lafarge. in fairness, and I, I stand corrected yeah, because there, there was some recycling down there. But there there was, uh, at, at some point, as I understand it, it just so to, as best as possible, no, we're, we're talking about the same thing. My understanding is that subsequent to the project being completed, that there was concern that some firm, I believe an out-of-state firm, I think in Connecticut, was that there was there was concern by residents of the area or concerned individuals in the area that they were going to undertake to import tires That's to be correct. part of the burning, that and they were correct. concerned about that, and there was uh, there was a disputation about that. Is that that's the that's issue? it? That's the issue, and it's really not over yet. It was tabled the discussion on the matter. Uh, but just in case you hear anything, and, and if anything else develops on that, I'll I'll come back with a package. It's uh, with all the real information on this thing. It's, but it got a little nasty on the floor uh, because of the schools uh, located in proximity to to the uh, uh, to the project down there. Uh, but. It was brought in by one of the legislators from, uh, I believe, Delmar. I, I think Delmar, Bethlehem. But just there was concern, and again, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it is my understanding there was concern. The county representatives were representative from that area brought the concerns of the legislature in the form of legislation because there was concern that one of the localities in the area was going to, they were concerned they might pass legislation that would loosen restrictions on burning of certain types of materials. Well, and they, well, were, they were attempting to, to stop that. Well, you're, you're correct, that. but the only concern, that, that I mean, it was, it was before your times. Uh, I think everybody except Al and 
I think Mike was here then when we passed that. Uh, but about uh, when Bill was here, but it, it's it was a concern. Um, Gary was opposed to the he was chair at the time, uh, and he was opposed to the legislation and sort of, but but it might surface again. That's all. And since we, we in terms of the Albany County Industrial Development Agency, had a part in that, I just wanted you to be aware of it. Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's if, if I may, Chair, just to make yes. sure that to, to allay any concerns of any of questions of the board members, uh, two, two important items to keep in mind. Uh, by way of background, there was a very large capital project, significant capital improvement, capital investment. Um, public hearing was held. Did, so we've held a public hearing with respect to the project. There was a pilot agreement entered into in connection with that project. That, that pilot agreement was agreed by all the parties. And number three, our documentation that we, that we prepare in connection with that project requires the company to comply with all applicable state, federal, and local uh, requirements. So if, if there's a... And it was approved by yeah. all the uh, regulatory agencies. <coughs> Exactly, but what I, the point I'm, I'm making is that the IDA, by doing the, the IDA project, the company does not exempt itself from any applicable requirements. Our documents require the company to comply with any applicable requirements. So if there is a requirement that they're not following, they're in violation of our documents. The IDA does not, our, our involvement didn't get them out of any uh, uh, requirement. Joe, has there, was there a restriction as to the volume of burning? That could go on under those documents. <clears throat> Not in our documents, but in but but in but whatever they're subject to by way of federal, state, and local requirements. That's that's. So important. if they if they want to burn more now, they have to go back to the drawing board. Wh whatever whatever, and I'm I this that's outside my area, Mr. Reefer. But whatever requirements they're subject to, they need to comply with. It's regardless of the IDA's involvement. There was a new clean air law enacted in Queemans last year, but that was after our um, IDA assistance was provided. So there is new legislation in the town that they'll have to abide by. Okay. okay. And our documents are flexible enough that that will then come in under our documents. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, well, was there a change in the um, in the uh, uh, the political structure there mm -hmm. that, Absolutely. that some yes. of this? Um, last year, the, um, the board approved the clean air legislation. There's a whole new board pretty much this year. Okay. So there is a possibility that, um, that there, we could see a change in the law. There's, I'm just saying the possibility exists. Okay. All right, anything else? Well, yeah, there's nothing else. No, no, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, the uh, uh, chair wishes to entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah, may I have a motion, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Good.